Right, I've managed to get Lou straight out of the pro shop. It's not the best of days, it's a bit blustery, but it's perfect conditions for the video that I want Lewis to explain how you execute a shot, which I find particularly interesting and useful, but I'm not really sure how you're supposed to do it. Right, the perfect spot to start things from 150 yards out, because what we're gonna do in today's video, I'm gonna look at sort of maybe a chip shot in and around the green, maybe 20 to 30 yards out, 150 out, and then maybe from the tee. And what I'm looking for from you is to educate me and our viewers into how you sort of control ball flight. And it's been particularly prevalent when you play, obviously, windy conditions, which yeah. we can get on the link. That's where it's come from, isn't it? it? It's just yeah. a bit, bit windy, a bit colder in, in, up here. And I've been fighting some stuff down and people have noticed and they have. We just thought we'd, uh, we'd do something and try and help people. Well, it's something, again, that's come from the members forum that we've got in terms of requests that have been made. So Lou was starting off 150 in. What would be, so first of all, club selection, what would you normally play for just a normal shot into this green on a day like today it'd probably just be a full eight iron full okay eight iron. yeah will so you change maybe, maybe for the flight it down maybe a little seven depends it's a bit cold today isn't it yeah so i definitely will be hitting seven so i'll fly down with seven so yeah. first of all in terms of flighting down you change the loftier club in to go to a stronger lofted club yeah definitely. that's the first thing yeah definitely yeah yeah We'll change camera position and then you can talk to me next about ball position and everything else that it is yeah. in terms of how you're going to execute the shot. Perfect. Great control. So first of all, great execution, straight out of the box, first shot of the day. Flight was lower, one. swing one. seemed nice and controlled. Yeah. Tell me what you do then, Lou, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, there's a couple of different things. You know, this is sort of a, it's a pretty stock shot, isn't it? You know, in terms of like a 150 yard from the fairway, but we're trying to manipulate something. So the things that I've got to change really, um, I want to present a little bit less loft with the club. So like I say, I was in between eight and seven, I've clearly gone for seven. Um, but even then, I'm thinking about, I'm just gonna pop the ball a little bit back in my stance. I'm not gonna really do too much with my weight distribution. I'm just gonna keep it the same. Pop the ball back in the stance, leave the hands where they are to, to create a little bit more shaft lean um, at address. So when and you then, say the hands where they are, that's so yeah, they, so they, they, so they, so the hands where they would normally be, but yes. I'm gonna pop the ball and the club back. So, so therefore then you, they're got you. you're gonna create a little bit more sort of shaft lean that yeah. way. Um, and then obviously, I, I, I'm gonna hope you noticed it is, um, the more speed through the shot, um, in fact, it's going to create a little bit more sort of ball speed and generally a little bit more spin, uh, backspin. So backspin really, if the ball's trying to sort of spin that way against the resistance of the air, you know, we're, we're trying to knock it down because the wind's coming that way, it's going to create lift. And we don't want that, do we? Okay. So I'm trying to take, um, obviously because I've de-lofted it as well, um, the club, I can then take a little bit more speed out of the shot, which yeah. is going to help um, just keep that flight down and keep that spin rate down uh, okay. quite a bit. Um, it's something I see quite a bit when people um, try to hit the shot. Um, they, they, that's the one element. They get the first bit right and the second bit when they add the speed in and then the ball goes like that and, and, and sort of... Well, sort I think of it's up. true again of every sort of average amateur golfer is the minute you stand on the tee and the wind is bowling a hoolie against you, often you'll try a little bit harder in terms of swinging harder and it has the adverse effect on what it is you're trying to do. So I get that completely. Uh, and then what I noticed was it's kind of like nothing else changing in terms of the whole tempo through the swing. There's nothing else in terms yeah, of... Yeah, you know you me, I try and keep it nice and simple. I think if you try and change too much, I think um, here there was a little bit of right to left breeze. Yeah. So if anyone noticed, you know, when I was hitting it, I was I was sort of a little bit this way. I was just trying to start it a little bit right, yeah. and then the, let the wind just drop it back. Um, but try and keep it sort of nice and simple. The the big key is good contact. Uh, yeah. You know, good contact. That's the other question I was going to ask you. Sorry again. And there's no sort of downward blowing. Sort of like again, your your iron strike position is that kind of. Yeah. So we with a normal iron strike, it's a descending blow. Yeah. And then. It's going to be a slightly more descending blow with it, with where it's got. And um, ball uh, but that's the, what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to present a little bit less loft to yeah. keep that flight down. So, um, not a, an actively you know more downward hit. Yeah. Definitely not because again that way it'll just gonna... automatically do that based on where the ball position exactly, is exactly yeah. and, and and that sort of lean yeah. that you've already created. Yeah. 
I like that Lou and I got that completely so that's the first position that's a mid iron we'll just step onto the uh, the next tee box I think and I'd like to see a similar sort of concept with driver in hand if that's possible oh yeah that's a good one right so next up is like I said it's from the tee and it's with driver and it's not a shot that I'm I don't mind an iron shot I can sort of do that I think driver off and trying to flight it down yeah, the concept of driver is, is is going to be a bit alien for some people and it's quite a tough shot this but if we go for it people can try it can't they okay though no. yeah so look the first thing for me that would mess with my head a little bit is that the we've changed the ball position with the iron yeah with driver everybody would hit towards the front foot so first of all does ball position change is the first question i've got for you yeah 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 same principle yeah so we don't want to There'll be conflicting things about this, I just have to say, like, okay. you, I'm, this is how I would teach it, this is how I would do it, and, and hopefully I can do a pretty good demo in a minute. Um, you, you can hit dry, down on driver, yeah. you can. Yeah. You know, some of the best players in the world, they hit down on their driver, yeah. even though off tight tee. And from, um, I always like to feel as though I'm hitting up on driver. Yeah. Um, and even with this shot, when we're trying to flight it down, yeah. I am still trying to hit you know, um, sort of a, a, with a positive angle of attack, you know, sort of a sweeping blow, if you like. Okay. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is like we did with the irons, where it naturally it's a descending blow, um, we're trying to decrease the loft and impact, so dynamic loft, if anyone uses Trackman. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here, is I'm moving the ball position back, but I'm still um, trying to get an, a, a, an ascending blow but with just quite considerably less loft. Okay. And that's really the key with this shot and, and what makes it so difficult is, um, you know, the, the, the shaft lean that I talked about, the forward shaft lean is, is quite difficult with driver. That's why we move it back. So we're gonna, so ball, ball slightly back of where you normally play it. Yeah. And we're gonna try and feel as though our hands are ahead. And what that's gonna do is just sort of decrease the loft and okay. um, try and get the loft as low as we can. Cause ultimately we can hit this with quite low loft yeah, and um, we're not going to change the T height. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, no, so you're we're not just, I'm height. not changing the T height. Okay. No, because you know if you do, you know, if you have it off the high T, and again, I, what I always find with driving now is, you know, spin rate's the key. You, you know, if if your spin rate gets too high, it's just going to go up. Blue. You know, you won't get low launch with high spin. Uh, you know, we just don't see that. So, um, trying to keep the spin rate down, um, keep the launch down. It's so. the same again principle about the sort of tempo and speed of swing. Are you? Are you I pitch? will swing a, li a little bit a little easier. easier. Um, I, I, and I, am I doing it for anything <laughs> more than I'm trying to control my yeah, movements? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know how important. If I can get these movements right, I can really hit the shot I want to do. And. Um, things like ball speed and, and distance is really irrelevant is you're going to get the distance on the ground if yeah, you do the shot you get right. That ball flight, right your carry's going to come down but your total distance should be well, do you wanna, way up so do you want to tee one up yeah i'm really looking forward to this <laughs> and then let's see this is a great hole for me because i think i'm not sure what the prevailing wind is but every time i stand on this tee this always seems yeah, to be coming into your longest part four and it's always, also it always, is. Four. It always is so here you go First of all, Lou, that's a super shot in terms of uh, that ball flight, everything we intended it good to demo. be. You've got to, you've got to be happy good with demo, that one, Good yeah. demo, that one, yeah, happy yeah. with that. So, so, so basically, I mean, I've recorded you at the side there as well. Hopefully we can pick up what you uh, yeah. explain in a sort of slow motion. Um, but that shaft lean from where I'm looking, you can see that again, yeah. ball position slightly less forward than what we'd normally do, let's say with driver. Yeah. Great explanation. Again, I'm gonna have a little go of that before we go as well, because uh, yeah, I'd really, I'd love and, to and be I able to it, execute that. I'm really that. trying to think, it's quite a tough shot that yeah. it, it, it is. But I think that what I would say is, you know, ball position back, but still sort of, which, you know, don't move the tee height. We're trying to sweep it off the tee okay. and get them hands sort of. Well, I want to give it, that it, a go. It's going to feel a bit like a drag to you. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to tee one up and give that a go. And then I want to move to round by the green, maybe sort of, like I said, 30, 40 yards out, which can be a real awkward position, especially when the wind is blowing. And I just want to see if we've got sort of similar principles to execute that shot as well. Cool. Bullet. Well, I'll tell you what, Lou. You can throw a blanket <coughs> over them. You can see again, though, we've seen the, uh, that bounding on down the fairway as well, yeah. which was... Yes, yeah, so we're going to lose a little bit of carry, but we're never going to know, are we? No, that's... And the idea is, is we've given you a technique where it's still, ca it's still your swing, isn't it? You know, something different's happening, <coughs> clearly. What you feel like, just for me anyway, you, you do feel like you're hitting a ball a lot earlier yeah. in the downswing than you would normally, yeah. obviously, because that ball position was the most alien bit. But clearly, 
Um, it's something you need to practice, but it works. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you did that. I know. This is a tough shot. I didn't expect that. Yeah, I did. Yes, let's start with that bit. So I've told him we're about 30 yards out. 58. We're 58, so <clears throat> only 28 yards out there. But yeah. what I'm looking for from this kind of position, we've got a bit of wind in two. I'll tell you what, the question is down to you viewers out there, and I want some honest answers in the comment section below. You're 58 yards out, what club are you reaching for in the bag? Because yeah. my guess is a lot are automatically going to go for a high lofted wedge. Yeah. Now, I'm thinking that they shouldn't be doing that, personally, with nothing in the way, no obstacles and yeah. whatever else. First of all, what would you be playing from here? And, and then how do we possibly look to flight it down a little bit into the wind? Um, I've got nine iron. Okay. I've got nine iron. I think uh, I like. Um, so normally I would just play lob wedge, but we're wind into, we're trying yes. to flight it down and stuff. Um, I wouldn't keep the same club and change my technique. You know, I wouldn't be going for that sort of ball back. I'd yes. be trying to keep my technique the same. Okay. Um, and just naturally just de loft it a little bit. Play a so nice this is all shot. about. So what you're saying is, it's all about taking loft off the club yeah. rather than manipulating your swing. Yeah, it feels like I'm doing position. something different here. Yeah. Um, when I'm trying to manipulate flight around the green, yeah. I will I will choose another club, you know, all the time, rather to, than to manipulate what I'm trying to do up or down. Okay. Rather than manipulate technique, yeah. Okay. I, I always try and um, keep my technique the same, keep the strike good. Um, but, but it's interesting for those of you who haven't seen an earlier video that we did uh, with Lewis about chipping and simplifying chipping. I think it's also important to know that you would play this shot in a. I don't say a different way, but you play it in the same it's way. It's very uniform how I play it. You do. Yeah. yeah. So let's go through that first of all. So just sort of, just neutral weight distribution. So no weight left side, no way, and, and just ball middle of the stance. Yeah. You know, just ball middle of the stance. Set the club as you. Yeah. You know, this club's designed to be used in a certain way. Just use it that way. Just keep the strike nice and clean. So I, I think that's a, go, go and watch our previous video. It's a, it's a, it's it, a little bit to it, but I think. It's simplicity. You know? I would go and watch that video, seriously. And since that video, I have changed the way in which I execute my chip shots, honestly, because I would have been one of those players that have watched or listened to people and I'm leaning forward, I'm leaning backwards, I'm yeah. changing the ball position, yeah. depending on the club that I've got in my hand. And since that video, I again have gone very much in a uniformed way of centre yeah. of stance, sort of around your body type of swing. And the only thing I've changed is the, the loft on the club. Yeah. So let's see again, let's see you execute that so far so good let's see if we can go three from three um, and demonstrate that shot so I can see from my side at least anyway interested to see where that ball position is not too wide of a stance you ever take either Lou I've noticed no. that no and then just nice and simple and we're just gonna run it up yeah Superb. Right with that, aren't we? Very good. And that's yeah. why I'm trying to keep it simple. And all them other things we're talking about in terms of weight forward, ball back and stuff, I appreciate yeah. they would in this instance, into the breeze, yeah. help a little bit. But the amount of amateurs I play with that miss hit their chip shots yeah. must be so frustrating. So that's why we do it like this. Well, I think one thing, like I said, it's almost going off on a tangent, but one thing from that particular lesson in terms of the chipping, it's about, as average golfers, not wasting shots, which we do all the hard graft. You get in and around the green, and the short game is so unreliable that you start duffing one a yard, then another yard, and you think, you know, well, this is such a simplistic way of uh, eliminating yeah. those wasted shots. Yeah. Anyway, really enjoyed that. Personally, I, I think I'd like to hear more from you in terms of what you'd like to see from Lewis out here on the course. But for me, I like if I play golf with Lou, it's often good to watch what these golfers do in terms of professional golfers and try and take elements from their game and get them into your own. But often what we don't really do is understand fully what they are doing. So for me to see that explained today in today's video, it's been really informative for me. I won't probably try the chip shot, but certainly seeing the iron into the green and the driver that I hit really was very different than uh, what I would normally do. So thanks again, Lou. Brilliant. Thanks to everyone that watched. Like I said, get your comments down below and let me know what else you'd like to see in terms of lessons from Lou. That's a title for a series right there. <laughs> I love it. Right, <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow night.